heard him and seen him in performances in over 140 films. He's met and influenced many world leaders, and now he's about to tell you how to unite the America he loves. That job's filled. Unique. Unique. Brilliant. Brilliant. And unpredictable. Unpredictable. Robert Davi is a renaissance man who writes, directs, sings, and does it all with excellence. Yeah, it's okay. We're all very impressed, but let's get on with it now. Robert Davi believes he should use his voice to both repay and help unite America, the America that made his dreams come true. No more Mr. Nice Guy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is The Robert Davi Show. Hello, friends. Welcome to The Robert Davi Show. I am Mike Gary, sitting in for Robert Davi out in assignments. Robert Davi... The CRN Special Projects Division out on assignments on a very important mission. Perhaps uh, defending democracy through his immense talent, but we're looking forward to hearing from that. Today we'll be joined uh, by Thaddeus McCotter. Thaddeus McCotter will be uh, pretty much doing the show, but I wanted to come in because when we first approached Thaddeus to uh, uh, come on and guest host this Robert Davi show, and he's done a fantastic job. Uh, we just kind of threw him into the fire, and we didn't really, you know, I think, uh, give him his proper due, a proper introduction to this network and to our, all of our glorious affiliates around the country. Thaddeus McConner, the Honorable Thaddeus McConner, is a, Congress, a former congressperson. He uh, is a, an attorney, who received not only his BA, but his JD from the University of Detroit. Um, a Republican, of course, and full disclosure, I am a centrist Democrat. And so just from this first segment, I wanted to bring Thaddeus on and kind of talk to him about what's going on in Congress, because it's always great to talk to somebody who's actually been there and seen how the sausage is made. Thaddeus, sir, how are you? Oh, thanks for having me back. It's, it, it's our pleasure. It's absolutely our pleasure. It's our honor to have you on this show. And later on, Thaddeus will be talking to Mr. David Rubin, former mayor of Shiloh, Israel. It's going to be a great segment. So uh, Mr. McCotter, uh, what's going on today in Congress is that we're going to see uh, a couple pieces, uh, pieces of key legislation come to the floor. This first one is the new uh, Democratic-sponsored voting rights bill, which would, amongst other things, make voting uh, Election Day a national holiday, would uh, allow for same-day registration, and would also, and I think this is most interesting, quote unquote, make gerrymandering a nonpartisan issue. And I know in Michigan, up there in Michigan, gerrymandering has become a big thing. And I want to know your thoughts on this voting rights bill, and I'm using voting rights loosely in quotes, because the Constitution dictates that voting procedures are left to the states. And when we you know, establish these quote-unquote nonpartisan redistricting commissions, we have these in here in California. And let me tell you, folks, they are partisan no matter what they say. What are your thoughts on this bill going through Congress right now, Mr. McConnell? Well, I oppose the federalizing of elections. Those are supposed to be done at the state and local level. My mother was a Livonia City clerk for years. And we saw how elections have to be impartial, they have to be objective, they have to be nonpartisan. What we saw during the pandemic is a host of state and local officials exceeding their authorities, implementing emergency, unauthorized changes in election law, all favoring the Democrats across this country, which is part of the reason so many people still continue uh, to have a lack of faith in the outcome of the 2020 election, whether right or wrong. So when you look at the way things are going to see the Democrats claiming to federalize elections, and one of the things you talked about was gerrymandering. Now, gerrymandering is unconstitutional uh, by virtue of the Supreme Court. Decisions have been rendered. Federal courts and state courts have declared gerrymandering unconstitutional by virtue of state and federal constitutions. So when the Democrats say they want to make gerrymandering illegal, gerrymandering is already illegal and unconstitutional. So what they're really talking about is turning it into a partisan political weapon. We saw this in California. We see this now in Michigan, where we have a new, quote, nonpartisan, unaccountable, wholly uh, unaccountable uh, commission that is allegedly, ostensibly supposed to be nonpartisan. But what you find are we've already got two Bernie Sanders socialist Democratic contributors who claim to be independent who are now on the commission, and one of them is running it. So they're going to be partisan. The problem is that when people lie to get on these commissions, there is no alternative to get them off. There is no way to put on people who are truly nonpartisan. And worse, the minute you go to a commission, you've got rid of any, elect any accountability because there are no longer elected officials in charge of it. You also have strict standards in place to prevent gerrymandering. And again, you have federal, state, 
uh, judicial review over any maps that come out to guard against them. So for the Democrats to sit there and, and the people who lie about the fact that this is Jim Crow, any types of reversion back to the original and legislative, state legislative attempts, be they Republican or Democratic states, what they're trying to do is gain partisan political advantage by federalizing it. And what is so ridiculous is, is they don't give a wit about the integrity of the ballot or anything else. It's just strictly partisan political games, and I just don't see it going anywhere. Very well said. And this, the For the People Act, which was the sweeping, uh, you know, Democrat, far left Democrat uh, agenda to really, what, like what you said, to completely federalize election, which is unconstitutional to begin with, because uh, it, the Constitution dictates that uh, election procedures are to be controlled by the state legislatures. And I just want to talk a little bit. This almost got me kicked off, uh, kicked out of the Democratic Party and had the my socialist brothers and sisters running after me with pitchforks is when the 2020 election did happen. And in Pennsylvania, we saw that the Pennsylvania Supreme Court overruled election procedures held by that were codified by the Pennsylvania state legislature, which is the correct procedure. Um, that was deeply unconstitutional. And I felt that that was Donald, President Donald Trump's greatest leg to stand on when it comes to talked about irregularities in the 2020 election. And so to see that not only we're having gerrymandering controlled at the federal level by instituting these quote unquote nonpartisan commissions, but also uh, not having voter ID. What are your thoughts on voter ID? Well, you need it. You need a voter ID. And I think it's inherently patronizingly and condes condescendingly uh, bigoted to run around saying people of color can't get voter ID, that they'll not be able to vote uh, with ID. That's just ridiculous on its face, and it's insulting. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they have a leg to stand on. So you have to ask yourself why they want to go to all these great lengths to diminish the integrity of the ballot. Because remember, election fraud affects and diminishes the actual vote of every single American that casts a legal vote. Yeah, it's, but the common refrain, though, Mr. McCotter, I'm talking Thaddeus McCotter, a former congressman and attorney, uh, the, the common refrain is like, oh, well, you need an ID to uh, fly in an airplane, but that's a commercial transaction. But we have seen, I mean, just here in California, when we have uh, automatic vote by mail, and I got three ballots delivered to me, all from the you know, previous tenants that lived in my house. And so this voter ID uh, issue, but also this ballot harvesting is a big issue as well. Do you guys have a lot of ballot harvesting, harvesting issue in Michigan as well? well? I think we saw it, although the problem, part of the problem that we're running into is so many people are focusing on such crazy conspiracy theories as servers in Germany and things like that. The reality is I think a lot of what the Center for Tech and Civic Life and others of the millions of dollars that Zuckerberg and the Democratic uh, dark money donors stuck into the election was designed to have ballot harvesting in states where it's illegal. Well, that's And they did it under the guise of changing the rules under the pandemic to sneak them in and use the, use the contributions and the grants with the strings attached from Zuckerberg and others to try to pull it off. Well, that's, that's a great point because like going back to what happened in Pennsylvania where the Pennsylvania State Supreme Court overruled the state legislature based on COVID protocols based on the police protective measures that are built in to the law. So that's that's very interesting indeed. But let's talk. You, well, you see, Mike, if I can on that, ahead, the problem please. that you've run into in Pennsylvania is once they elected a Democratic uh, majority to the state Supreme Court, they went back after six, seven years and redrew all the congressional lines anyways. Yes. If you, so this is yeah. a partisan state Supreme Court that is going to continue to err on the side of partisanship rather than on judicial uh, and judicial reasoning. Well, that takes us down an interesting road because, I mean, the state Supreme Courts, those are appointed by the governor and usually confirmed by the legislature. I mean, is it possible to have an impartial Supreme Court not only at the state level, but at the federal level? I mean, we've seen the politicization of all courts, haven't we? In Pennsylvania, they're elected. In Michigan, they're elected. A lot of states still have the election oh. of state Supreme Court officers. In Michigan, they're nominated for those spots at the state party convention, so you know what you're getting into. Now, judicial reform, we can talk about that all we want at the state level or even at the federal level. But in the final analysis, if a state Supreme Court is going to be elected to do the partisan bidding of one party or the other, that's a huge problem. Well, I mean, moving, moving past that, and that's an ex excellent point, what, what we see, though, the, with the politicization of the courts, because they're elected, like you said, in Pennsylvania and in Michigan, and also the dark money. You talked about the dark money with Zuckerberg being able to pump in not only his own money, but to use his platform, Facebook, through his own moderation and through his, uh, him delegating to his moderators. That becomes something of value in itself, isn't it? 
Well, the problem is very simple. The elections, the integrity of the elections are supposed to be like Caesar's wife beyond reproach. Mm -hmm. So when the when you see a Democratic donor with an agenda, a billionaire, multi-time, multi-billionaire, start handing out grants with strings attached to local clerks, to secretaries of state, what you're running into is the clear perception of a bias creeping into the system, which is not supposed to have any hint or whiff of bias in it. They knew what they were doing, and they went ahead and did it. They used the pandemic as a pretext for it. And now we have the mess we have today, and the Democrats are trying to codify the mess with the election bill. And I believe it's numbered H.R. 1, isn't it? Yeah, H.R. 1, the the For the People Act. Let me ask a very simple question. Do you think they give a damn about the people? All they care about is themselves in a time of pandemic, in a time of recession, in a time of lost employment, in a time of inflation. The first thing they did was name a bill HR1 to help themselves, not the people. Fascinating. All right, we're going. We're, I'm going to get you out of here on this before you take over the reins and speak to Mr. David Rubin. I know that you're a a great guitar player that you and the uh, Second Amendment uh, rock band toured extensively for the troops. Real fast, Thaddeus, best guitar player of all time. There's no such thing. The great virtuosos like Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen, and others, but I like Keith and uh, Pete Townsend too, for people with sticky fingers like myself. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Congressman. We'll be right back. Thaddeus is going to take the reins on the Davi Show. Davi, back in a minute. Keep listening for a free offer from U.S. Med. If you're living with diabetes and using insulin, you know the pain of sticking your fingers over and over again. By simply wearing a small remote device called a continuous glucose monitor, or CGM, you can reduce the pain of sticking your fingers right away. If you're testing your blood sugar daily and administering insulin three or more times per day or using an insulin pump, call today and learn about the latest CGM technology. We'll send you a free ebook telling you all you need to know about CGMs. A CGM can immediately reduce pain. It's accurate, easy to use, and helps you make better diabetes treatment decisions. Your new CGM may be covered by Medicare or private insurance. Call now to learn more. 800-524-9313. 800-524-9313. That's 800-524-9313. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they're able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy, and I'm happy too. Thanks, Tax Doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-391-8713, 800-391-8713, 800-391-8713, 800-391-8713, that's 800-391-8713. Do you want to fly somewhere, anywhere in the world? Smart travelers call MyFlightSearch.com for the best deals on flight tickets. Going to Manila, Bangkok, London, how about Singapore? Call MyFlightSearch.com for the lowest flight tickets available. What about a local vacation? Let's say you want to fly to Vegas, Orlando, Miami, Los Angeles, or Denver. Pick up the phone and call MyFlightSearch.com right now. We have exclusive deals that you can't find anywhere else. The only way you can get these low airline prices is by calling us. We have so many low prices available, we can't possibly tell them to you right here and now. If you're flying somewhere anytime in the next six months and you want the lowest airline ticket prices anywhere, you owe it to yourself to save a ton of money. So pick up your cell phone and call myflightsearch.com right now. Call 800-445-3166. 800-445-3166. That's 800-445-3166. Call now. 800-445-3166. Robert Davi. You know, I'm the one delivering the message. Not receiving it. 
Welcome to the Robert Davi Show. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus McCotter, former member of Congress and recovering politician. Robert is off working on a project, hopefully uh, safe travels, and can bring home a bouncing baby product for the audiences to review and to hopefully praise. With us today is going to be David Rubin. He is a former mayor of Shiloh, Israel. He's an author, a frequent contributor to Fox News and Newsmax TV. He also has written for the Jerusalem Post. And he has a new book out talking about confronting radicals, what America can learn from Israel. He's also a founding member of the Shiloh Israel Children's Fund. And we're going to be talking to David about that, as well as the events in the Middle East. David, welcome to the Robert Davi Show. Well, thank you, Mike. Good to be with you. Well, it's nice to have you with us. Some of the things that are, what are some of the things that are occurring in the Middle East, especially regarding Israel, that you find most interesting and perhaps uh, disturbing? Well, things, things that are happening in the Middle East. Wow, that's a big one. Uh, we always well, go uh, big on the Davi show. Yeah, I see that. I see that. Well, look, I'm, I am disturbed by, uh, by the country of Iran. Uh, working vehemently on a, a nuclear bomb uh, that will be used against Israel and against the West. I am very disturbed by the country of Iran, which is uh, as, is run by an extreme Islamic regime that is threatening all of its neighbors, threatening the state of Israel, that is supporting all of the Islamic terrorist organizations in the Middle East, uh, such as Hamas and Hezbollah. I find that very disturbing. Uh, though, those are things that disturb me. Uh, in addition to that, I'm disturbed by, uh, by false national movements, uh, such as the Palestinian movement, uh, which is basically uh, an invented people that uh, that, is, that is claiming my country and and it's doing a pretty good job of of carrying out this hoax around the world and you know some very good propaganda and there were a lot of people on board yeah those things disturb me uh, we're talking to David Rubin here on the Robert Davi show what do you make of the Biden administration's plans to open a separate American consulate in eastern Jerusalem, the one that will operate independently of the U.S. Embassy? Yeah, well, that's a, that is a big problem. Uh, the, the just to give a little background, uh, mm -hmm. you know, we've had this this these two parallel governments that have been formed. It is the Biden administration in America, and there's Prime Minister Bennett's. Uh, left-right unity coalition in Israel. And Biden is thrilled that uh, Netanyahu and his, his right-of-center government are no longer in power. And in fact, he's so thrilled that, that he has uh, been carrying out an intentional honeymoon policy with Bennett's left-right coalition. Uh, now, now, Bennett is a, is a right-of-center kind of guy. His views are at least as far to the right as Netanyahu's. But uh, because he's formed a coalition with the left and with this radical Arab party, so, uh, so Biden is happy to work with Bennett and is trying to avoid all of the controversial issues. And would, that's been the case. That's the been the case not until now. Yes, and so what, what has changed? Why now is the Biden administration starting to test that relationship and end that honeymoon? Look at, yes, but Mike, every, every honeymoon wears off at some point, and and even political honeymoons. So you know, they get, get you get to a point where where they're supposed to be serious politicians and and take take uh, you know their policy beliefs and carry them into action. So uh, Biden's people want to open a separate American consulate in eastern Jerusalem that will operate independent of the U.S. embassy that was established in Jerusalem by President Trump. So, so you have to understand why are they why are they doing this, right? 
So, so the uh, the the purpose, the stated purpose, is that they want to serve the needs of Arabs in Jerusalem, uh, which of course is implying that they don't think that the, uh, Biden doesn't think that his own U.S. embassy can serve the needs of Arabs in Jerusalem, which is kind of a you know s- strange kind of claim. Uh, so basically what it's become is this Palestinian firebomb that threatens to un- undermine the Trump administration's recognition of Jerusalem as the undivided capital of Israel. So that's what's really happening here. Biden wants to undo, uh, wants to undo a Trump policy, uh, which was really a flagship of the Trump administration, and, uh, and to undo it... Uh, he has to have some tension with with Bennett, who is firmly against having uh, an American consulate open up that's going to be run by the Palestinian Authority. That is the real danger for Israel. That's why most Israelis are against it, and and that's why it's creating tension between Biden and Bennett. This is the Robert Davi Show. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus Makata. We're talking to David Rubin, former mayor of Shiloh, Israel, and known as a man known as the trusted voice of Israel. Mr. Rubin, why seeing the success of the Trump pol- era policies within the Middle East, why does the Biden is it just simply domestic pressure on the Biden administration or is there some deep philosophical ideological drive within his own administration to do this because it is entirely counterproductive from my point of view. Well, look, you have to understand that that there are heavy pressures in his party from the Palestinian activists and the far left who see this consulate as a stepping stone to a Palestinian state. And, you know, which, by the way, Biden is on record as supporting. Biden supports that so-called two-state solution. So, uh, so yes, yes, there are heavy pressures from the left and from within his administration. And that's one of the reasons why he's pushing for this consulate. Isn't it true, though, that you need two people to want to have a two-state solution? And I've seen no indication the Palestinians want a two-state solution. I see that they send a one-on-one-state solution with Israel gone. That is true. And the Palestinians, Palestinian Authority, whether it's Fatah, the terrorist organization, or Hamas, uh, they... They're, they've always been on record as being against uh, further negotiations, and and they, you know, they're going to do. They're, they're like the proverbial wolf. They that you you give them a steak to, you try to appease them, and and they're going to eat the steak, but they're still going to attack the human. This is the Robert Dobby Show. We're talking to David Rubin, former mayor of Shiloh, Israel. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus McCotter. We're going to be back after this break to talk with Mr. Rubin about his book, Confronting Radicals, What America Can Learn from Israel. Attention real estate investors, do you need cash immediately? If you own one or multiple rental properties, you can use your equity to get cash out fast. The best part is we don't need tax returns or even a good credit score. At America's Loan Source, we are not a bank and we don't have bank rules. We make the decisions to loan you money and there's no limit how much we can give you. Some clients have gotten as much as $500,000 or more within days. Use the money anyway way you want if you own one rental property or a hundred and COVID has left you in a cash crunch we can help you turn your equity into fast cash call now for details and close in as little as 10 days and get the cash you need 800-353-1760 800-353-1760 800-353-1760 that's 800-353-1760 What are you going to do with your old car? You can try selling it, you could junk it, or you could donate it to Heritage for the Blind. Your car will be towed away for free and your donation is tax deductible. 
Just call 1-800-785-9618. Heritage for the Blind accepts cars, vans, trucks, and boats. It doesn't matter if your vehicle runs or not. It will be towed away for free, and you'll be supporting those that need help. Heritage for the Blind is a nonprofit organization that helps the visually impaired live fuller lives. Call right now to donate your car, and as a special thank you for calling, you'll receive a free three-day vacation voucher to many exciting locations. Call Heritage for the Blind right now, 1-800-785-9618. Donating is easy, and your vehicle is towed away for free. Plus, you'll get a free vacation voucher. Call now, 1-800-785-9618. That's 1-800-785-9618. The smartest way for you to get the lowest prices on your plane tickets, domestic or international, is to call SmartFares first or last, but you've got to call us before you book your plane tickets. Fly anywhere in the world, fly anywhere in the U.S., and SmartFares can save you up to 75% on your plane tickets. We have the lowest airline ticket prices on over 500 airlines, and you've got a great 12 hour free cancellation window. Plus, with our live agent help, you can always get fast help and fast answers. So on your next trip, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, how about right now? Pick up your phone and call SmartFares. Plus, save up to 75% in your plane reservation. So call right now. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. 800-915-2644. If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Their expert staff can help you turn your book idea into a real book, a masterpiece that could someday make the bestseller list in hard copy and digitally all across the world. Page Publishing can help you completely take your idea for a book, write it, and publish it. So if you want to join the ranks of some of the most famous authors in the world, call now for a free information kit. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. Make a free call right now to Page Publishing. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. That's 800-378-3212. The Robert Dobby Show. I'm Dwayne Robinson, LAPD. I'm in charge here. Not anymore. Hi, welcome to the Robert Dobby Show. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus McCotter, former member of Congress and recovering politician. Joining us today is the trusted voice of Israel, David Rubin, the former mayor of Shiloh, Israel. He's a columnist, an author, a frequent appearer, a frequent contributor to Fox News, to Newsmax TV. He's also a founder of the Shiloh Israel Children's Fund. You can reach him at davidrubinisrael.com or shilohisraelchildren.org. Mr. Rubin, let's talk about your recent book, Confronting Radicals, What America Can Learn from Israel. What led you to write this? Well, that is, I'll tell you, the, the uh, riots in America, the, the riots, the looting, what we saw burning down the cities of America uh, just a, just a year ago and two years ago, uh, and which actually started before, but obviously we saw it at, at its most intense, uh, as its greatest intensity during the election campaign. And uh, I was very disturbed by it, you know, because they're, they're out there marching and demonstrating and and looting stores and attacking police officers and they're claiming that it's all about racism and it it just seemed very very odd to me it it didn't seem real that they that they're claiming this is about racism as they are burning bibles and and burning american flags and tearing down monuments to american heroes uh, and and then I heard that they're that they and I see them throwing Molotov cocktails. Now maybe some Americans don't know what that is, still don't. Uh, but Mo- Molotov cocktails are these homemade fire bombs, 
that the Palestinian terrorists have been using for many years to attack Israeli policemen and Israeli soldiers and Israeli pedestrians and 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 drivers. So uh, this disturbed me, and it, it it just made it clear to me that the parallels between the radical secular left in America and the Muslim radicals in Israel and in the Middle East are very striking and very disturbing because it, it just brings to life that collusion that clearly seems to be between those two groups, the radical secular left and the Muslim radicals. We're talking with David Rubin, former mayor of Shiloh, Israel. Now, unlike a lot of people who simply curse the darkness, you talk about solutions to some of these problems in your book, Confronting Radicals, What America Can Learn from Israel. What are some of the lessons that you drew and can help us solve some of these problems? Well, Thaddeus, what, what, what I've seen is that the, the left-wing movement that seems to have taken over the universities, that seems to have taken over the educational system and the media, it didn't happen overnight. You know, so people sometimes act like it suddenly happened overnight, right after Biden was elected or right after Obama was elected. Well, no, it, it started way before that. Uh, at the end of the 1960s, uh, the, uh, a lot of the people from the radical left, uh, they stopped demonstrating in the streets and they started going into uh, the corporate boardrooms. They, they they entered the business world. And I remember at that time, everyone said they're going establishment. The left is going establishment. Well, no, they didn't go establishment. Uh, they went the establishment route in order to create a new establishment. And they brought all of their extreme left policies into the corporate boardrooms and into the media and into the colleges and and into the school boards. So they've been doing this for a long time. They've been doing it for several decades. And, it, and it really, it's only the radical left that has been doing this in a methodical way. And they, they've pretty much taken over the universities, taken over the colleges, taken over the, the school boards and the media. And, you know, it's time for people on the right and right-wing conservative religious more religious people who believe in in judeo-christian civilization that it's a good thing uh, those people need to take their country back and the way they're going to take it back is not just through elections although it's important to get out and vote and to be involved but also through getting involved at the grassroots level joining the school boards uh, being very careful about where you send your children and to which schools and and you know you don't have to pay for something that you're against ideologically uh, so there's so much that can be done at the grassroots level that people need to start doing well we're talking with david rubin former mayor of shiloh israel also author of confronting radicals what america can learn from israel uh, mr rubin when you when you look at the situation i think you're absolutely right some Conservatives tend not to be interested in going into government because usually people who go into government are people who have problems or ideologically driven to try to change or alter the behavior of their fellow citizens, which is not what conservatives like to do. But what we're seeing now is a direct, as you rightly point out, the new left, as, they're, as they reach their 60s and 70s, have captured a lot of institutions. And they're making sure that they can drive their ideological agenda on everyone. And yet the tedious work of grassroots politics is precisely, as you rightly point out, the only way to try to combat this. Because if you don't vote with your pocketbook, if you don't take care of your children, if you don't self-govern, what's going to happen is these people are going to try to come in and govern you, whether you like it or not. Isn't that correct? And that's what they're doing, yes. Uh, that, that is what they're doing. They're very methodical about it. And whereas uh, people who are more conservative, as you say, don't want to influence others, well, they, they're going to have to. They're going to have to lose their conservativity when it, be, when it comes to influencing others, uh, because the left has always been very aggressive, 
and and the right is not going to uh, regain power in any institutions until they start becoming aggressive and taking aggressive action. That doesn't mean becoming violent. It means becoming aggressive at the grassroots level. And by the way, I mentioned about school boards. Uh, a lot of people don't realize you can run for a school board. You can get elected to a school board without having children in public school. And for that matter, you could even run, run and get elected for a school board without having children in schools. Uh, all you have to do is care about education to get involved. And that is where serious change can be made. And change doesn't have to be the change that that Obama and Schumer talk about. Change can also be uh, reversing the the horrible changes that have happened to America in the past 30 years. And that, that can be undone. There is no change that is not reversible. Well, I think the left knows that, Mr. Rubin, when you look at what Attorney General Garland has tried to do by trying to crack down and weaponize the police powers of the state against parents who have who are dissenting against critical race theory and other ideological leftist indoctrination in the public schools. Isn't that one of the problems that you're talking about? That's right. And Garland, remember, was going to be on the Supreme Court if the Democrats had their way. Uh, so... Uh, you know, so you, you have to play tough. You have to play hardball with them. Otherwise, uh, you know, you're going to end up with the opposite of what you what you need. And and you know, and that's one reason why Trump was so effective, uh, because uh, Trump was an out of the box kind of guy. And and you know, I've already written about this in my previous book, Trump and the Jews. Uh, the, he was an out of the box kind of guy, and and. He wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid to take action, uh, to go against, to go against those who were aggressive, and to be aggressive himself. And that's the only way that you can win uh, when you're fighting against the radical left. You have to play hardball. This is the Robert Davi Show. I'm Thaddeus McCotter. We've been talking with David Rubin, a trusted voice of Israel, about his new book, Confronting Radicals, What America Can Learn from Israel. You can get it at davidrubinisrael.com or simply type in the title, Confronting Radicals, What America Can Learn from Israel, into your, into your search engine. We will I'm Al Simon, 91 years young. I created Balance 7 20 years ago. At 67, I went to see the doctor for the first time in my life and found I, that I had medical problems. He told me that was normal for my age. I don't believe God intended us to be sick and old. I decided to find something to bring my health back. For 10 years, I studied pH and how important it is to the human system. Balance 7 gave me back what I lost by getting older. I no longer get out of bed with a joint discomfort. Balance 7 can do for you what it has done for me and many others. In three days' time, you'll feel more energy, less joint discomfort, and clarity of thinking. No doctor or hospital can do what Balance 7 can do for you. Balance 7 is the key to unlocking the healthy immune system. Bring your body back to balance. Order now. Receive free shipping with the code word AL. Go to balance7.com. That's balance7.com. Order now and get your free shipping and a free gift with your order. Go to balance7.com. Use the code word AL. Hi, my name is Lily. My mom and dad used to fight about money all the time. Then one day, I heard them talking about this guy. Some uncle I never knew called Uncle Sam. Well, they say this Uncle Sam guy wanted them to pay him like a gazillion dollars. And they didn't have a gazillion dollars. So they called this company they heard on the radio called The Tax Doctor. And The Tax Doctor worked with Uncle Sam's people. I think they're called the IRS. And they are able to work it out so my mom and dad didn't have to pay Uncle Sam very much money at all. So now mom and dad are happy, and I'm happy too. Thanks, Tax Doctor. If you owe $10,000 or more to the IRS or state, call now and pay less. 800-391-8713, 800-391-8713, that's 800-391-8713. If Ernest Hemingway was alive today, would he say this to you? Shakespeare, Mark Twain, Edgar Allan Poe, all great writers. 
And after reading your book, I simply must add you to the list. Wait, you don't have a book yet. So make a free call to Page Publishing. Their expert staff can help you turn your book idea into a real book, a masterpiece that could someday make the bestseller list in hard copy and digitally all across the world. Page Publishing can help you completely take your idea for a book, write it, and publish it. So if you want to join the ranks of some of the most famous authors in the world, call now for a free information kit. Turn your book idea into publishing gold. Make a free call right now to Page Publishing. 800-378-3212. 800-378-3212. That's 800-378-3212. Robert Davi. Another $80 million write-off. I guess it's time to start turning overhead. Welcome to the Robert Davi Show. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus McCotter, former member of Congress and recovering politician. Again, I'm not out there now, so I can't receive any credit for all the wonderful things they're doing in Washington. With us today is David Rubin. David was the former mayor of Shiloh, Israel. He is known as the trusted voice of Israel. He's a frequent contributor to Fox News, Newsmax TV. He's also written columns for the Jerusalem Post and other publications. And he's an author of numerous books, one of which is the most recent, Confronting Radicals, What America Can Learn from Israel. What I'd like to talk with you, David, if it's all right with you, is something that was born of a terrorist attack upon yourself. And yet rather than retaliate with destruction and killing, you retaliated with an act of creation and healing. It's the Shiloh Israel Children's Fund. What can you tell us about it? Well, I, I started the Shiloh Israel Children's Fund uh, after I was wounded in a terrorist attack. And you know, I just finished my term as mayor of Shiloh in Israel, and uh, I was I was just being a regular civilian coming home from Jerusalem, driving home in my car one evening. I had my three-year-old son with me in the toddler seat behind me, and the car was ambushed by Palestinian terrorists. Uh, Muslim terrorists were on the side of the road shooting at the car with AK-47 assault rifles. And I, I got shot in the leg. My son got shot in the head. Uh, the, the bullet that went into his head and through his neck missed his brain stem by one millimeter, we later found out. And oh, thank God we both survived the attack. We barely got away from the terrorists because the car was dead at first and it wasn't starting. Uh, when I finally got it to start, I was able to zoom away and get get to an ambulance, which took us to the hospital uh, where they got to work on us. But uh, out of that trauma of that terror attack, and, and it was a trauma, you know, and there are many families in Israel that have suffered far worse from their own traumas from terrorism and wars, uh, but but we suffered as well. And out of that trauma... I decided to take the evil of the terrorists and turn it into something good. And I started the Shiloh Israel Children's Fund for the purpose of healing the trauma of the terror victim children and restoring some of the lost innocence to their lives. And that's, uh, that's what I did then. It was 17 years ago, and we now have a campus with over 2,000 children who are treated uh, through therapy, music therapy, art therapy, uh, horseback riding therapy, therapy with small animals, and uh, biblio and sports therapy. And we're doing all of this, integrating it into a full educational program. And as I said, we have over 2,000 children on our main campus alone. And we're, we're just doing great things for the children. And we're talking with David Rubin about the Shiloh Israel Children's Fund. Now, this takes place right in Shiloh, Israel, doesn't it? And within that area, that block of communities? Correct, correct. The first capital of ancient Israel. Uh, before there was Jerusalem, there was Shiloh. And, uh, and this was the first capital of ancient Israel, where I'm sitting and talking to you today uh, from. 
and and uh, today it happens to be a um, a bit of a political hot potato. It's it's right in the heart of Israel, right in the biblical heartland of Israel, and unfortunately, because it's uh, right in the biblical heartland of Israel, the uh, the opponents of Israel don't want us to be here. Uh, but um, that's okay. They can they can think what they want, and and we're going to go forward. So we're we're growing and we're building through the children. Uh, Mr. Rubin, how can people help to support the Shiloh Israel Children's Fund? Well, we have a website. We have a separate website from the one I cited before, which was davidrubinisrael.com. And the, the two websites are linked, uh, but the, the website that focuses specifically on, on the Shiloh Israel Children's Fund is simply Shiloh, S-H-I-L-O-H, ShilohIsraelChildren.org. That's Shiloh Israel Children.org. This is the Robert Davi Show. I'm Thaddeus McCotter, your guest host. Robert's away on, va on a working vacation. He's working, I'm just teasing. He's actually working on a very important project he hopes to bring to audiences in the near future. We're talking with David Rubin, former mayor of Shiloh, Israel, a frequent contributor to Fox News and Newsmax TV, as well as a columnist for places such as the Jerusalem Post. And he's the author of Confronting Radicals, What America Can Learn from Israel. Now, David is talking about the Shiloh Israel Children's Fund, of which he founded, in which I believe you are still currently the president of. And, and if I can ask you a question, I, I think is very relevant to the times in which we live. Uh, Mr. Rubin, you were a victim of a terrorist attack. And yet, again, rather than try to retaliate or to engage in hatred and violence, you actually turned this into an act of creation and a way to try to help heal traumatized children. What was it that led you to make that decision, the, what I believe to be the absolutely right decision, and rather than turn to vengeance? Well, look, I, I, I happen to think that God was involved, um, you know, just in uh, giving me the guidance uh, to, to make the right decision. Uh, because if emotions were, were everything, uh, then after that terrorist attack, I uh, I was ready, you know, a day or two later, I could have just lined up every terrorist and and just, uh, you know, if you gave me the AK-47s that they had, I would have shot every one of them. Uh, that was my feeling right after the terrorist attack. But but then I started to, to notice, you know, some of the miracles that we experienced and and how how there was potential to take evil and turn it into good and and that the, the drive to do that was just irresistible you know we have an expression in in our language in Israel Hebrew uh, which is hakol tova and that means everything is for good it doesn't mean that everything happens that happens is good we know that bad things happen to good people but it does mean that everything that happens happens for a good reason. And when something, something that seems really bad or evil happens to us, um, what we're supposed to be doing is taking it and trying to turn it around and turn it into something good. So, so that's, that's what I, I did. I had this vision of integrating education and therapy for children after you know, we went through all the pain that we went through. And I'm, I'm just thankful that, um, you know, it, it, it's had its ups and downs for sure over these years. Um, but I'm, I'm thankful that I, was, that I had that vision and I was able to, uh, to learn how to, how to actualize it. And we truly, you know, looking back now, I say, yeah, we've made some mistakes along the way, but, but I, I thank God that I was able to follow through and, and make it happen. It's also, I would argue, very important, and correct me if I'm wrong, but when you come out of a tradition where forgiveness, where turning bad events into positive, constructive change for your fellow human beings is, is, is cherished, 
It also shows the dichotomy between an entity or institution or organizations that preach hatred in the cause of trying to achieve a political aim. Because that in turn becomes very self-destructive and it winds up boomeranging on you and making your own life worse and the lives of others around you worse. So I would think that coming out of a tradition where forgiveness, where love and creation are what is cherished is essential uh, to your project, the Israel, the Shiloh Israel Children's Fund, and other acts which could one day perhaps bring peace to that troubled region. Uh, right, exactly. And and that's you know, I I consider it a privilege to to be able to help, to be able to help children who suffered. And it's and and yes, we're always we're always supposed to be focused on the positive. We're always always supposed to be focused. Okay, how can how can I rebuild? How can um, you know we have we have armies, we have we have governments, and you know the, it's the job of the soldiers to go out and hunt down terrorists and to see that they're that they're captured, to see that they're punished. Uh, but but it's not it's not the job of the average citizen, and I always you know I may have been the mayor of Shiloh at one point, but I I consider myself to be an average citizen, and uh, you know it's a, it's an opportunity, so so I I just saw very clearly what needed to be done. Okay, there was there was a need, there were large numbers of children who were traumatized. And there were large numbers of families that were broken apart, and there were there were large numbers of lives that needed to be rebuilt. So I so I I saw an opportunity to to build something, to rebuild, and to help the children. That was David Rubin that we've been talking to, who used his own suffering to put smiles on the faces of traumatized children. God bless you for that. You can reach him and fund ShilohIsraelChildren.org if you want to help. This is the Robert Davi Show. I'm your guest host, Thaddeus McConnor. Until we meet again. That's America to me. Let's talk about your credit cards. When you first start using them, it's a slow drip. You make charges, then more charges, then bills come, and they keep coming. When you open your statements, the flow.